Hey y'all, it is Dee Dee. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about st getting started on your knitting journey. It's an exciting time. You're starting to craft. It is a great craft to work on. It's great for filling time if you um, have to take the bus to work or um, you have time in a waiting room waiting on the uh, doctor's offices. Just, just any, you know, general idle time. Um, the two basic things that you'll need to have are yarn, like this big twist from Joanne, uh, and knitting needles. So, now there's different types of each knitting needles and yarn. Um, typically what you'll want to look at when you buy the yarn, you'll want to look at the recommended needle or hook size. So since we're talking about our knitting journey, right here where the knitting needles are generally they'll recommend uh, a needle size for you to use uh, to, to meet the desired gauge this yarn recommends a five millimeter uh, set of knitting needles um, I have right here the 5.5 which is within the range that I'd recommend um, if you want your project to look uniform I'd recommend kind of staying within one to two millimeters of the um, yarn recommendation. Um, now, if this is confusing to you, I do have a video um, on how to read yarn labels like this one. Uh, I have it, um, I might link it below, but it is in my channel as well. So, like I said, you'll need these two things for sure. Now, um, there are different types of knitting needles. Um, I don't have any yarn here to show you the different types of yarn. Um, they're just kind of different thicknesses. Now, the common types of needles that you will see are straight needles, like I have here, um, that have an end that keeps your work from falling off, and then these tips are where you'll um, use the knitting needles. Um, I do have some other types as well here uh, for projects. Now, not all projects require all the different types. Um, and not all types of needles are appropriate for all types of project. If you have any questions about that, feel free to shoot me a message or I may be addressing it later in this video or others. Um, the next needle type I have are the double pointed needles. They'll typically come in a set of either I think four um, or five. This one has four. Um, these I believe are from uh, I think Knitter's Pride. I think they're the Zing needles. Uh, these are the US uh, 10 millimeter. Now these are typically recommended for projects where you'll be going in the round as opposed to flat knitted. Um, these are great for socks, uh, hats, um, or if you want to work a scarf or anything in the circular fashion or even amigurumi. The ones I have behind me, these amigurumis, uh, are crochet but there are patterns out there where you can knit amigurumi as well. So the next ones I have are these circular needles. Now, typically circular needles will start at 16 inches long from tip to tip. Um, now, and they'll range out, I think, from like 60 inches from tip to tip. Um, there are, however, some so some ones you can get for socks, like these. Uh, I do not know how to pronounce them. I think it's the Shiagu. Uh, Chiagu, I do not know how to pronounce them, but they are great for knitting socks. They take some getting used to because they're so short. These are about, I think, a six inch, and you have to really kind of work finely with them. Um, so those are the types of needles. They do have interchangeable um, circular needles, which are also um, really great. Um, for the circular needles, you can knit flat with them, uh, but it is important to remember which end the working yarn is on. So we're going to set these aside. Um, some other things that I'd recommend, uh, speaking of, that you may need. Um, if you have trouble with the yarn rolling around, you may want to invest in a yarn bowl. Now, this right here is not your typical yarn bowl. It, in fact, it's not even really a yarn bowl, but it's something to hold the yarn. I saw this at Joanne. Actually, I'm gonna be honest, I saw it in Alt Knot's video um, when she was doing some Halloween decor or actually uh, Halloween home decor uh, hunting a few years back. 
and I had to go out and get my own. I think it was like 10 bucks with with sale price and some coupons. But it's just something I can hold the yarn in so it doesn't get out of control. Now, typically I'll have it for balled up yarn, but it'll still work for the skeins of yarn as well. It's just something you put the yarn into so it doesn't travel while you're working up on your projects. So. Um, another thing you might want to have to hold uh, your projects in is a, um, a tote bag. So this one right here is a tote bag I purchased uh, from Tea Turtle. Uh, what it is, is it's a cute little plushie that collapses, that can either be collapsible or just hold on to the little strap. Um, it does collapse back like it's a foldable, reusable bag. Um, I just haven't had a chance to fold it back up yet because it has uh, had some projects in it. But this one is great. There's like a ton of different project bags. Uh, I love little tote bags. Um, to, I love the little kind of uh, slinky material. Shopping bags are great um, for carrying it around. Uh, another recommendation that I don't have a picture of, but I have used quite frequently. Whenever I order stuff on Sheen, uh, I use those zipper bags. Uh, I reuse them as project bags. They're great for on the go because you can zip up everything and you don't have to worry about losing all your little notions. Notions is another thing I wanted to bring up. Um, so typically you may need stitch markers um, to mark where you are in a pattern or if you have a lot of graph repeats you may need some stitch markers I have a few different types in this right here now this container that I have them in is just a repurposed uh, container of nerds actually so when nerds had their uh, rainbow colors that were separated by each color I noticed that it would do really great to separate stitch markers by type and by size so I picked one up it was like a two dollars for a pack of nerds and after I ate them I made sure to wash this out I washed it really good um, so I could use my stitch markers I have some round ones right here it's kind of hard to tell but I have some round ones uh, some small round ones mostly for socks and smaller projects and I have some larger ones which are for um I think everything but like bulky uh, size 13 uh, needles then I have some heart ones down here and I have some uh, cat ear shaped ones here I'll get some out now these are different than crochet stitch markers and you'll want to be sure to um, not use these for crochet because with the nature of crochet stitches if you use these they're kind of like a ring shape so this one's the cat one it's so cute um if you use these for crochet you're not going to be able to use these again because when you crochet you end up crocheting around the stitch marker whereas these right here with the circle will typically stay on the needle so i'm going to show you with this one right here You'll typically mark the stitches. It's hard to tell since I don't have any work on these, but you'll put this here, and what it does, as you can see, it's kind of on here. It separates the stitches here from here, so you'll know where the pro uh, pattern is telling you what to do. So, those are for a little bit more advanced patterns, which you will you will get into. You can do it. Trust me, you can do it. You can get it done. So that scare out of the way I have some other stitch markers as well um now another thing you may want to invest in is a little bag to put some notions in I'm going to show you some of the other stitch markers I have so either a bag or for this one this tin holds literally everything I need to knit or crochet so I will get into this in just a moment as another thing um you will need is scissors You'll need scissors to cut your working yarn or if you need to change yarns. So, if you have um, needles that don't have a clear definition for what size they are on them, you may also need a um, needle gauge. So what a needle gauge is, it's a little different than gauge uh, swatches, but it tells you, it's kind of hard to see, but you see the numbers on there. Uh, the numbers on there refer to um, 
the numbers that say uh, start with like 2.00 and then with the zeros at the end, those refer to the millimeters, whereas the numbers at the top will refer to the num numerical size, or at least in, uh, in America sizing, in U.S. sizing. So this was actually a um, item that was given in the Jimmy Beans Fright Club a few years back, and I love it. It's, it's a great tool, and it's shaped like a pumpkin. It is so cute. Uh, I don't have them with me right now in this, uh, in this bag, but another thing you'll typically want is a ruler or a uh, measuring tape to measure your work as you go. Um, okay, so getting to what I have in my little um, utility kit right here, which is in just a, just a, a mint tin, just uh, something to put it all in. Um, so first up, I have some more scissors, because sometimes I'll take this out and just put it in whichever project bag I'm working on. Um, the next thing I have is cable needles right here. Now these are for if you want to cable knit with your projects, which we haven't got much into, but we will. Um, I have like a very tiny stitch holder. So this is also for holding stitches. Like if you have a few stitches you want to not work and then go back to, you can do that. I've got a bunch of other stitch markers. Now I have these right here. It's hard to see. So these are little gummy bear charm stitch markers. And if you see right here, I don't know if it'll stop shaking. This is a lobster clasp. So this one right here can be used for knit or crochet because it has the clasp where it can be removed um, as you go. Um, but this is also, a lot of people use these to um, kind of use them as a row marker to mark how many rows you've done to keep as like a progress keeper. Uh, so I have a few other um, charms through here. Now these right here are some of the heart ones that I had in the other container. Um, I haven't gotten around to putting them back in there yet though. Um, now I have a few more, a uh, few more, a uh, few more items that would uh, be great, great for your knitting journey. So, um, I have some pins and highlighters. So. Ink pens are always great. If you want to jazz it up, you can get like gel pens. I got this green one at, I think it was Family Dollar. No, it's not Family Dollar. They probably do have them there. Uh, I got this one at Dollar General. Um, then I got these cute things at Five Below. I was a little disappointed because with the packaging, made it look like they were, uh, that you could separate these and then just use one at a time and have one here and then have one somewhere else if you needed them. But they're, they're stackable in that once you, you uh, remove it, there's no way to separate them without the um, highlighter drying out. But they're really great. Both of these are great for making notes on your patterns or highlighting uh, what size you are working on for your project. Um, but yeah, I think that's most of everything I wanted to address. Oh, well... Also, another thing, it's not a mandatory, like, most of this stuff is not mandatory. Uh, it's just some recommended uh, suggestions that I'd say would be really great additions to your knit or crochet bag or just set up. Uh, the last one I wanted to mention is lotion. Now, sometimes there will be yarns that dry your hands out. Um, or, you know, you just, you just, you just need to have moisturized hands. Um. For me, I've noticed a lot of time when I work with wool, uh, it kind of soaks up the moisture from my hands a little bit more, so I'll have drier hands when I work on the wool-related projects as opposed to if I'm using acrylic. Um, so I hope this has been informative. If you have any questions, uh, concerns, or if there was a topic that I didn't discuss that you want more information on, uh, let me know either in the comments or shoot me a message. Um, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day and good luck on your knitting journey. You can do it.